Hey there, it's Will from Willow's Southwest Studio. Today we're diving into the basics of lapidry with a beginner's guide to making a cabochon. Whether you're new to the craft or just looking for some tips, this video will show you quick and easy steps to cut a piece of stone into a beautifully polished cabochon. I'll be working on this gorgeous piece of verde agate. And to start, I'll show you two common rock stages you'll encounter. One that's freshly cut, and one that's shaped and already rounded. Then we'll take it to the lap grinder, where I'll guide you through the different grit stages, from a rough 80 grit all the way to a mirror-like polish. I've already got my verde agate preloaded on a dopping stick, so we can jump right into the fun. All right, let's get this started. All right, let's start by looking at the two types of cuts you'll encounter when making a cabochon. First up, we have this rough cut slab right here. As you can see, it's a pretty basic square cut, straight from the saw. This is usually how your stone will look when you first get it, or if you've just cut it yourself. It's got sharp edges and a flat surface, perfect for shaping and polishing. The next type is you've got this pre-shaped slab that has these rounded edges. Basically what I've done on the tile saw, or the jewelry saw, is I've trimmed away these rough edges. That's going to save me a lot of time on this lap grinder because I've already got the shape that I need. All I've got to do is take a stencil and make sure I've got a nice round oval shape to work with. So if you don't have access to a saw that's able to round this off and get this shaped to the way you want it to, and you've got this right here, which is what most people are going to have, you're also going to want a stencil. If you don't have a stencil like this, you could probably just wing a circle just for now. But if you're looking for something nice, so you just line it up till you get something that looks good. I could probably get the most out of this size right here, which might be a size 20. I got this backwards, so the numbers, of course, are mirrored. And then you just take a Sharpie, and you're going to draw an outline for what you want. I'm not going to do that right. Well, I guess I could, just to show you guys. I didn't want to... Because I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with this piece yet. Just get that nice traced in there like so. Then you get your stencil away and now you can see I've got this beautiful perfect oval that I can just grind that down to. I could have went another step up. As you can see I've got a lot of meat left. Ideally you want to use the most of your material. And you're going to pick a size that you want, especially if you're doing jewelry. There's usually some standard sizes that you'll use. Most of these I just kind of wing it because I just I'll make my jewelry pieces the wraps right around from it, so it doesn't quite matter as much. But if you're looking for a specific size, make sure you cut it accordingly to that size that you're going to be working with for your stencil. So we've got that blocked out, and I've got my piece already glued to my dopping station. So I have a dopping station. This is just basically this wax right here. It's hot wax that cools, and it allows this to stick, this little stick. It allows you to pivot your cabochon around really easily on the grinder. If you don't have this, you're probably going to wind up shaving off some of your fingernails. So be careful. This is another nice thing is it just gets your hand away from the diamond disc here. Uh, it's nothing more than just using an emery board though. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Some people like, oh no, that really hurts. But this thing does not really hurt. It'll burn you more than it'll actually do any damage to you. So don't worry about that too much. You might want to wear some gloves too. I usually will wear gloves because you get that grit in your fingernails. Just another thing to keep an eye on. And speaking of gloves, it's always good to practice proper safety. I've got here my safety goggles. These are a must. When you're working on any type of lapidry, what happens is you get these little pieces of rock chippings that break off and they go flying everywhere. The last place you want those to go flying is your eyes. So make sure you protect those. Also, you're probably gonna wanna wear a pair of gloves just to protect your hands doesn't protect it much. Usually what happens is it'll actually tear a hole in the fingertips and the gloves I use. And I use some pretty good gloves, but it just rubs it away. What happens is the rubber part gets sucked underneath the rock and then it just rips it open. So I usually don't use gloves too much, but I will use them on stuff like hematite and other type of minerals that I'm working with that to get really messy and then it'll just like stain your hands a certain color. And also, lastly, and super important, make sure you are working in a well-ventilated environment. If you're not, 
Make sure you're wearing a respirator. That's super important. I've got plenty of ventilation in here. And if I wasn't doing this video, I would definitely be wearing a respirator, but you wouldn't be able to tell what I'm saying. So for this short video, I won't be using that respirator, but I highly recommend it, guys. I've got plenty of water in my water reservoir here. I've got an empty drain cup right here. And before we get this show started, let's make sure we got our cabochon off. We don't want that to go flying when we turn it on. So for this step, since I've already got this rounded out, I'm going to actually knock these corners off. I'm going to go around and knock those out before we do anything. That's going to help us get a dome. And it's going to make life easy. After that, we will rock the rock back and forth on this axis this way, followed by this way. That's going to leave four peaks that are going to be on each corner and we'll shave those off and start to really dome this out this will make more sense as we get going so i'll just turn my water on and hopefully something comes out i've got that good old arizona hard water out here loves to plug things up the calcium for this step we're using the 80 grit diamond disc and we're going to want a pretty good water flow because we are going to be taking a lot of meat off the water is a must it helps prevent that dust from getting airborne and there we go. We got it turned on. Beautiful. So I've got it to a setting of about speed three on this particular lap grinder that I use. You don't need anything too crazy fast or high speed. The slower it is, the more efficient it actually is. So again, we're just going to be trimming off those edges and just let it kind of glide along. You don't have to apply too much pressure at this stage. You don't have to apply too much pressure at any stage. If you're pushing down on this like crazy, uh, you're probably overdoing it. So just kind of let it gently go. And uh, this is going to be the loudest step too. This 80 grit is always loud. So you can see how I'm using the dopping stick to use my thumb to just kind of spin it around. And you can see this is starting to slowly abrade away. We've got a nice little dome starting to form. We're also going to want to address some of this. Now I can always take my stencil and realign it up to whatever one I used, which is probably the number 18 right here. Actually, it's probably the number 19. Yeah, it looks like it was the 19. I don't think it was the 20. Well, it might have been the 20. So we've got that, yeah, the 20, and it looks like it's still pretty on target. So we don't need to do too much grinding on the side. I actually cut that pretty decently with the saw. I'm surprised it turned out so nice. Usually you don't have that case. But just keep rotating it around, using your thumb just like that. It's at an angle though, just that's the most important thing. Just keep an eye on that angle. And you're going to want to make sure you pay special attention to these corners here. Where it's the smallest, you're going to feel some kick on the machine. That's because it's really tight in some of these areas and you might have a little bit of a bump that it's running over. So you want to make sure you knock that bump down. Otherwise, this is looking pretty good right about now. And yikes, make sure that thing stays down. This That's one of the weird things about this particular model. Is that black water guard does not like to stay in place. All 
All right, you can see now we've got this beautiful dome starting to form. It's still really sharp at the top, but we've got this nice angle going on. You want to be a little bit even. You can see right here it's not quite even, but that's okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start rocking it along the long axis, like I mentioned earlier. And basically what that is, is we're going to set it like this, and it's just going to go the long axis, just like that. And that's going to allow it to get nice and rounded out this way. Followed up, we're going to go the short axis, but I'll show you that in just a second. Let's get this long axis out of the way quick, though. So we're going to rock it back and forth, back and forth, till we get the desired trim that we want. We don't want to go too far, at least not on this specimen that I'm working with. I'm leaving a little bit of a ridge, so that way I can kind of trim the other side just a bit. So I don't want to go too deep. And just keep checking it because I don't want to get too far down. So that looks pretty good right there. You can see how it's starting to dome out this way. So now I'm going to take the short axis and I'm just going to rock it back and forth this direction. And be careful with the side that you really can't see because sometimes you're rocking it too far over on the short. It's easier to do it on the short way than the long way. That's definitely a common mistake. So you can see we've got this domed off really nice, the long axis, and you can see I've got the short axis domed off, but I've got these four peaks here. One, two, three, and then four on this side. So we're gonna wanna address that, and to do that, this is where having this stopping stick really helps. You can do the other stuff with your fingers pretty easily, but you're gonna want to start to rock it around. And you can see how the dopping stick, it kinda pivots it so you're going to be able to rock that around really easily with that. You can still do it with your fingers. I used to do that when I first started learning because that's really the only thing I had to work with. It just takes a little bit more time and you may start to rub off some areas that you did not want to originally. But uh, this will definitely help you out if you do have access to a dopping stick. Again, we're just going to rock this around and just make sure it keeps moving. You want to knock those little corners off. You can start with one area and just kind of rock it back and forth, like a half side of it. But ideally, you kind of want to do it evenly around. It's entirely up to you, though. It's just a personal preference for this step. And the whole goal of this 80 grit diamond disc that we're working on right now is just to shape it, to get that shape blocked in. It'll just pave the way for all the other steps for polishing if you can get it down pretty good on this step here. This is looking good so far. I'm going to spend a little more time. Feel it again. That's another reason I don't like to wear gloves because sometimes it's really hard to tell when you're wearing gloves how it feels, if it's smooth or not. Because sometimes when it's dry like this, it may look like it's smooth, but it's not. Or even when you add water, it kind of fills in the gaps and makes it look like it's perfect, but it's definitely not. 
Just want to tap those little sharp edges around. We're almost done. I actually think this is probably going to call it a pretty good start right here. This is looking beautiful. I've got it nicely rounded out. I've got it pretty even all the way across. It's a little bit shallow here, but we're not going to worry too much about that yet. And overall, it's pretty even. We've got a nice dome forming, or that has been formed. Could probably shave maybe a little bit down more. Let's do that real quick. No, this is good for this project. Normally, I'd want this to be a nice round, but you can see I've got a little bit of a bump right there. I might address that. I don't know. I think we're just going to go with it, though. Yeah. We just got to worry about that. I've got that going down a little bit too much. All right, let's move on to the next disc. All right, so we got that first step out of the way. The next step is the 180 grid disc right here. We'll just get that installed real fast. There we go. So I've got the 180 right here. Oh, this is looking absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to see how this is going to look when it is finished. Let's move right along. For this step, we don't need too much water. Just a little less than what we were working with, but we still need some water. And again, I'm going to set it to about three on this particular device that I'm using. Since we've done so much groundwork on the first step, this should be really quick and easy. You can see we've got a nice, beautifully smoothed out surface. Just helps to spend some extra time on that first step. So let's go ahead and take care of this really quick now. Again, just keep, for this, you're just going to want to rock it around. Just keep it moving all around. You don't have to worry about anything because we've already abraded all those speed bumps off. We're just trying to make it extra smooth and knock off all those little micro bumps that may be on here still. And you can tell already this is a lot quieter of a step. Your neighbors will love this step. All right, that's looking pretty good. This is nice and smooth. I don't feel anything too crazy. I think we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch. All we got to do now is this here brown disc. And there's a couple other steps we could do. There's a red right after this one and a blue. But I'm pretty confident in this agate that we've got it pretty soft and out that after this we can move right on to the final polishing stage. This is looking really good. So for this, we're going to add a little bit of water. As you can see, I can't get anything coming out. I've already got a, like 25% amped up. That might be too much, but we want to make sure this is like a fabric felt pad here. It's not felt, but the it's a definitely like a fabric material for this grit. We want to make sure that water soaks into it, gets it nice Sometimes I like to take an already pre-cut one and just kind of soften it around to help get that water into it, just to get it wet. There we go. Beautiful. All right, and again, for this step, super important, make sure you keep this rock rocking all around. This is going to get it nice and smoothed out. It's going to get rid of all those little micro bumps that are still existing, and it's going to make it look really beautiful. Just keep it moving around because you don't want to reintroduce any more new pits or not pits, but uh, sharp angled edges or anything like that. That's the secret right there is just to keep it moving around. You can see that it's drying out. My thing is getting plugged up. You definitely don't want that to happen. There we go.
All right, I think that's gonna do it. Let's just get a feel for it. Oh, it is beautifully smooth. Don't feel any real bumps. What about back here? No, nope, that even feels good. Let's take a closer look at this. Look at that. Is that looking good or what? So I think we'll move on to the aluminum oxide disc now. This is going to be awesome. Oh, I'm excited about this one. All right. As you can see, that brown disc, look at it. already had a little bit of a gloss to it. So we definitely don't need to use the other pads. We're just going to go straight on here to this aluminum oxide disc. And we're going to really make this thing pop. This is going to be beautiful. This is looking so good already. It's a little bit dull, though. But it's going to look real beautiful in just a moment. All right, we've made it, guys. We are in the final step. I've got here a felt pad that's been laced with aluminum oxide already, which is a powder. You, sometimes you can buy these that are already pre-laced, but I have a separate thing that I use for my tumbler. I'll just add a little bit to this and rub it in. I've got here a squirt bottle with distilled water. The last thing you want to use is any kind of hard water that may have some calcium in it because that calcium is going to abrade and it's going to cause little streaks and scratches. So I highly recommend using purified water, distilled water, works best for this particular step. And then of course we've got our Verde Agate Cabochon right here that's almost complete. This is looking absolutely beautiful. I am super excited to see how this is going to look when it's got its beautiful final polish on. So let's get right to it. So for this step, it's really easy. I'm going to sprint this. I don't want it to be completely soaked, but I want it to be wet enough. That might be too much. Now you can use your finger for this and rub it in. I like to use one of these pre-cut slabs that I have it's just because it's a flat surface and just kind of smear it on into this pad. This has seen so much use. I should probably upgrade this pad one of these days, but it's got a lot of life left into it. If you keep it clean, and you don't have to worry too much about it. As long as you don't cross-contaminate it with some other stuff, you'll be fine. So you can tell that pink stuff on here, that used to be some kind of diamond paste that I used to use on this ages ago. I haven't used diamond paste in a long time. Really don't need it. The aluminum oxide works well in so many, so many different types of rocks and minerals. I think that's pretty good. So we're going to keep this rocking around. You'll notice it starts to stick. That means the pad is drying out. And usually by that step, if I continue to talk as much as I am, <laughs> it'll dry out even quicker, but it'll dry out, and that means pretty much you're done with this. Let's turn this on to about speed setting of two. Keep it rocking around, just very light. Just let it glide across, just a, like a happy cloud just drifting by. Nothing too crazy. You do want to kind of make sure we angle it out here. We're going to attack those in one last bonus step that I'm going to give you guys, but for the most part, this is going to really make it pop. Oh, I'm excited about this. Just take your time on this step. See it's starting to flash a little bit already on those corner rim piece there. Just going to glide. Floating on by. Be a happy little rock. I'll really do it some justice here, hopefully. Sometimes it's tough to fight the urge to want to take a look at it and see how shined up it is, but the longer you leave it down, the more it's going to look really beautiful. I can feel it starting to stick here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more water to it, and you can feel right away it just goes back into action. I don't think it's done just yet. It's almost done. I can see it really starting to gloss up on those side lines. A little bit more water. I'll spend a little time right here on these edges that I missed. And we'll get this side too. Oh boy. Feel it gripping again, so it's almost done. I think that's going to be the last time I'm going to use for the water. Let's go ahead and take this off and let's see what it looks like oh my goodness look at that shine is that beautiful or what oh wow let's get a closer look oh boy just look at that that is really shined up beautiful oh my goodness 
Wow. Wow. This Verde Agate is looking absolutely beautiful. What an awesome cabochon. I would call it done, but hmm, I think we've got one more step to do. Besides popping off this dopping stick, we do want to kind of bevel out the other reverse side to make it nice and smooth so it doesn't have any chipping down the road. So let's do that real quick. All right, our beautiful cabochon right here to pop this off. All we got to do is just like that. So that's pretty easy. That's one thing I love about using the wax. It just pops off. In the old days when I didn't have a dopping station, I would use epoxy and it was just so messy and I've hardly got any residue on here. So all I got to do now is just kind of make sure I got all the residue off. I'm going to switch over to my 180 grit diamond disc and just kind of flatten this out. I'm going to use my fingers. This would be a good opportunity to use those gloves. And then what we're going to do is we're going to deburr this really sharp edge that goes around here because that's going to be prone to chipping. So let's do that real quick. We're just going to let this go flat. I want to get rid of that black marker that I have. Just kind of move it around. Get that nice and flat again and nice and smooth. Actually speed this up just a little bit more. And getting this off is going to always be the trick. Let's see here. Yeah, we need to go a little bit more. We still got some black. Got a little bit of stubbornness going on here. And the next thing I'm going to do is just kind of just flatten out. Not flatten out, but I'm going to... We've got this really sharp edge. We want to grind that off a little bit. So I'm going to hold it at a 45 degree angle kind of. And just kind of make sure it moves around a lot. We want to gently take that off because that will chip very easily. And the last thing you want is your hard work to have a chip in it. Just make sure you keep it rotating around. You can kind of feel it smoothing itself out. This side needs it though, really badly. And there we go. So you can see I've got this nice tapered out. Just beautiful. Yeah, this is a really beautiful cabochon. One thing you can do is you can spend a little bit more time making sure that burring is nice and rounded and smoothed out really good. So that way you'll get a nice, beautiful all around shine on the whole thing. For this, I'm actually gonna wind up throwing this inside of a tumbler, which is gonna deburr it really nice and get it smooth. And then I'm gonna throw it in for a really final super polish. Once I get enough of these cabochons made, usually I gotta make a whole bunch of these so it fills half of that barrel up. But when I do, it's gonna have absolute perfection, a super beautiful shine. But if you just wanna make a quick one, cabochon just like this, and you're just looking to make that quick shine, these are all the steps that I go through to do this. This is ready to be loaded into some jewelry, especially if I'm not gonna see the backside. I will polish this backside up if it is going to be like in a wire wrap or something like that where it will be exposed and you don't want it to be a nice dull on the back of your necklace or perhaps it's for a ring or something like that. Um, if it is for a ring, you probably don't need to worry about the backside because it's gonna be covered. But if it's on a necklace or a pendant or something like that, you will want to polish that backside. It's entirely up to you. It's your rock. You can make it as perfect and as beautiful as you want. I really hope you guys learned something on how to create and polish a beautiful cabochon. This was such a neat specimen and so much fun to work with. They have some really neat rocks around the Verde Valley and oh, this was just a beautiful piece. I want to thank you, Joe, for donating this specimen to me. It's been so much fun to work on and I'm going to be working on one that I can't wait to give to you as a special thanks. So thank you again, and thank you guys for watching. If you really enjoyed this or like content like this, I have so many more videos on lapidry, pottery, and of course, rock hounding. Be sure to check those out. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe to help this channel grow, my friends. All right, my friends, hope to see you in the next video. Till next time.